Welcome back inside the film room. I'm Zach Goins, and today I'm joined by Jeremy Swift. He plays Leslie Higgins on Apple's uh, Emmy-winning comedy, Ted Lasso. Jeremy, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. We always have fun chatting together. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Zach. It's good to see you again. Likewise. Well, here we are today. This, By the time people will be watching this, the finale will be out and about. But here we are recording this on finale day. Congratulations on season three, this show as a whole. What a what a fantastic run that it's been. Does it feel real? Yeah. Yes and no. I still, you know, because it seems, it does seem a little fast, or, you know, but it's it, you know it's it's been such there have been chapters to this experience you know and the the middle one uh was the the show hitting with season one and then as doing season during the pandemic and then as dealing with the pandemics mm-hmm. doing season two and um yeah so there's been these different ep- it's been episodic you know um and in a way it feels like now it's normal, really. You know, it's mm-hmm. a normal, almost relatively normal times to have done season three and it come out. And now it's, <laughs> it's you know, it seems like it's over. Who knows? I mean, we, we you know, it's a very conclusive um, final episode. If that, you know, without you know, you can't get away from the fact that it it's it called so long farewell. Um, but. Anything can happen in the world of entertainment. So, you know. That it can. And it it did. The finale was very, I I personally was so happy with it. So pleased, felt fulfilled with everything. But like you said, there's plenty of opportunities for, you know, if they wanted to continue, depending on who's who's involved, who wants to do anything. Like there are avenues, but I also feel completely satisfied with that, with what we got. And I think your story for Higgins, this was the perfect bookend for him to, you know, go from, season one where we have the revelation that he was you know not willingly but cooperating with Rupert as he's hiding this infidelity and then the fallout of that to then come back around and be the one in the diamond dogs meeting that is delivering this powerful message bringing it home about people who can change and bettering yourself and you know working to to do this and I feel like we've been spoiled that Higgins has been so great for so long that we almost forget just the the journey the growth that he's gone on throughout this show yes well you know the end of season one he was you know upped and he got to a new level and he's sort of uh relished that status Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been an awful lot of fun as well because you know uh Rebecca still has to remind him sometimes and that's where there's a lot of fun that you know <laughs> she's in charge and, <laughs> and and what is he doing when he when he does these crazy things like you know freezing during a match just in case he jinxes it yeah uh, yeah but but you know really he's just um yeah he's he was comfortable in his own skin possibly for the first time in you know, for a long time, possibly the first time in his life, you know, and it's all down to Ted's, you know, um, magic wand of, of um, you know, fun and listening and positivity. So, um, yeah, the, it, it's, it's a, you, you're right, Zach, that, you know, we could, we could sort of forget that um, that happens, but um, his, um, his mentorship is, is kind of um <laughs> it's very spontaneous he's not somebody who meditates i don't think but but when he's put on the spot he comes up with a bit of wisdom that he didn't know he had right. <laughs> I've, I've i've called i'm started calling him a sort of accidental yoda uh, <laughs> uh so uh but yeah he's been such a joy to 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 play really yeah. really it's been a joy to watch and you mentioned the mentorship and you know, someone that benefits from that is Will, the kit man. You sort of take him under the under Higgins' wing a little bit. And I think my favorite moment for Higgins this season is in episode six in Amsterdam, where, you know, we think one thing, that that he's going out on the town for a, a wild night of pleasure in the red light district. Turns out we should have known better. It's Higgins. He would never do that. We're on a jazz tour. <laughs> Talk me through this sort of, you know, receiving the script, reading that, finding out the twist. 
were you caught off guard that wait we're going to the red light district or did you know all along that the intentions were clear we were just going to listen to some jazz i did because before i saw the script brendan uh whatsapped me to say do you think you could lead a band with a with a, a number so i was like it depends on the tempo <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but yeah so uh so i knew that i was going to be playing something right uh before i saw the script yeah so i knew that that was the that was the girl that you know however we got there um he would play with some other musicians in a club i uh, i think it's it's fantastic that throughout that history we end up with you on stage very much you and higgins both in their elements i know you actually play but you know, to go from season one, you're playing at home when you're fired or when you leave Richmond. And then season two, you bring out the bass at the Christmas party when you're singing in the streets. Now here we are, all three seasons, we've got you jamming out. Was that part of the contract? Were you like, I must be able to to play? Or was this just a happy accident that sort of worked in with your character? Uh, yes, it was. Um, well, it, it came from a conversation in the first season when I with Jason in the car park at the studio and and um and I said what what is he um how long is he away for I said, maybe he's grown a beard like and I said tea. like I said yeah maybe is it like a Rasputin length beard <laughs> you know um you know that he might have grown in very quickly in like two weeks <laughs> um Jason said no I think a, a jazz beard and, and I and that's when I said um Oh well, I uh, yeah yeah I can do that and and, and that seems feasible and I, and, I, and I play jazz anyway and he went okay what do you do and I, and I said well, I play the bass and he said in an amateur way and I went yeah I think I'm quite good um, <laughs> uh, so that's how that came about I mean actually in the first season because I'm playing solo and you you see uh, and the slightly different cutaways from um, Hannah's point of view. Uh, it, 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 when they cut it together, the, the actual piece <laughs> doesn't make sense at all um, because I, I should have I should have sort of overdubbed the whole piece. But so it, um, so the, 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 it's but it's the uh, it's the sunflowers episode where, you know, you get the whole thing and, you know, mm -hmm. recorded it in a studio um, and played live with them. But, you know, because of the because of the possible tempo changes, we had to play to a, a a, a track so that it, it okay. you know, otherwise every cut would be might be slightly different might would be very weird but yeah I, I love playing with those very young musicians who were just ridiculously talented I mean during takes they would jam a little bit and I mean they were about 21 oh it's just incredible it's, so a, it's a shame that only Will got to witness that it, it's a special moment but you know I wish we could have had everybody out there experiencing it because it was, it was so great but I, I love Higgins in this season. I, I feel like over the course of the show, he's really mastered physical comedy, whether it's intended or not. You know, we had the the nervous choking has been around for a long time, but it just continues to ramp up at the most inopportune moments. And then yeah. this season, we get the the spilled tea with the soccer ball in the window. We get you out of breath, running, doing whatever it takes to get to the Diamond Dogs meeting. <laughs> what's the what's the key to you approaching these moments? And you know, just not overdoing it, but having the perfect amount of like that slapstick humor so that it just hits because there hasn't ever been one that is like, okay, Higgins, calm down. It's not that bad. Like <laughs> it, it's just so, so perfect every time. Oh, thank you. Well, I love physical comedy. You know, I, I love the stuff in Friends that uh, Matt Perry did. I, I thought, I think he was, I mean, I think he's a comic genius and I always, I, I love that kind of thing. Um, uh, so yeah, I think there have been a couple of times like when I <laughs> when I did the spilling of the tea one take, I did a kind of almost juggle with the <laughs> cup and saucer, and um, the director Matt Lipsy went, yeah, not not not, not, <laughs> not not real, no no, <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, but um, you know, you have to give you, you have to give. I, I like to give variety in the takes. Um, yeah, there was, uh, but I love doing it. Yeah, I love I love a bit of physical comedy I, I love watching physical comedy and, and if it's real it's just uh, uh accidents always make me laugh people mm -hmm. banging their head it's so wrong but can't people, go wrong with that <laughs> oh it just kills me every time you know i'm just such a child for loving that i suppose but yeah 
<laughs> well, on the flip side of Higgins and the the whimsical aspect of the physical comedy, he also has the the very res- tough responsibility of you know being committed to this job. Like you mentioned earlier, the the status has increased as he's the director of football operations, and now you know he has to have that tough job in episode five of bringing up the possibility of moving on from Ted. And then when we get in the finale that we know Ted's leaving, he's the one delivering, Hey, I've got these candidates. Rebecca doesn't react well to, to either of those, but I really admire that about this character that he is committed to the club, very club first, but also has that sort of sentimentality with the knowing to read the room with his relationships with Rebecca, with Ted, with Keely, all of these people. That's absolutely right, yeah. But ultimately, that's his, uh, excuse the pun, goal. You know, that's his, you know, his his, that's his motivation is what is best for the club. And, you know, you have to know that in sports, those kind of hard decisions happen a lot. Right. Uh, and it, well, it's, but it's probably, you know, a lot more brutal because, um it's it's like a corporate decision if a manager is not working he's not working and you know and the fans are let down and they feel you know aggrieved and hurt and they have to <laughs> they have to move on and it's it's a bit like politics you know that are all uh, um i can't remember who said it now um uh, all, 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 all political careers end in failure that the you know usually, unless unless you know, you're like a, an outgoing president and you... you right retire. off into the sunset. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or you, or maybe you should retire. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... It, but but it, not so in this case. It's very, it's of course very... Um, it's a very, well, spoiler alert, you know, it's a very beautiful parting in, uh, in this season finale. Absolutely. Uh, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier with the freezing in the Man City match, the superstitious, you know, Higgins doesn't want to move because I, I, Ted Lasso has reached the point where, you know, the online internet detectives are looking for clues with every single thing. The show is very good about that, you know, having these callbacks, the Easter eggs, but even the fans are to the point where we've turned something or nothing into something. And in this episode, there are so many Wizard of Oz throughout the season, but this episode, there's a lot of Wizard of Oz references with the pinball machine in the pub, uh, the the song from the Wiz at the end. Oh, yes. People have determined that this is a Tin Man reference, that you are frozen, you need your oil. Oh, like, do they have they? being superstitious. <laughs> is that real or was that just, are people I had, taking it too deeply? <laughs> I had um, no idea about that at all. I mean, and I hadn't put... Uh, uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore, so I don't follow the um, these kind of um, niche uh, observations. But it's a uh, dark rabbit hole of Ted Lasso conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, yes, that was the intention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think. I it, mean, I, it's it's one of those things where he's going back to Kansas. There's you know there there's yeah. so much stuff where it's like. Maybe yeah. it wasn't intended, but it, it works out that way. But just knowing the level of Easter eggs and stuff that that you all do with this show, people had to think that it was intentional. Yeah, well, let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are so many, so many things that I I have to say, I, I don't necessarily get myself in the show. Uh, there's there's so much nuance, and it, it's um, and I've said this before it. it the show can be, I, I, I understand why people watch the show many times because it has layers to, to quote um, Shrek Donkey. Um, you know, so uh, the, there is stuff going on in there that, that, you know, doesn't impact on you on the first time. A little bit like the, the other fe- fellow Kansas man, Robert Altman, you know, that, that there in his films, there are, there are things that you don't quite get the first time and you watch it again and you go, Oh, and you put them together, you know, you know, and I love that. Yeah, it's fantastic. There's there's so many throughout this season. And one of the ones that, you know, I, I think was most shocking to me, and you're directly involved in it, being that way back in season two, episode 11, you're talking about the the script that you have written, or the, the novel, excuse me, about all of these specific things. A billionaire takes a footballer. It's when Edwin Akupo is courting Sam takes them to dinner they get their meal for free because there was a piece of glass in the yes. 
And then to come back to that with yes. that actually have or not actually having, but being the excuse that Akufo yes. leaves, are we, is Higgins actually a psychic like Aunt Devorah? Or like, should Rebecca have been meeting with him all along? Is that, is oh. that what's going on here? Or is this just another coincidence? I think uh, they just love tying things together like that and making people talk about it. I think that's what <laughs> it's very motivating for, for the show to be chatted about at different levels. But yeah, no, I, I, I did laugh at that one. I thought, wow, yeah, yeah. He sees into the future. What's going on here? I, that's that's uh i think that's the spinoff that we all need if if lasso is done we need a, a psychic higgins show i think are you on board with that one? Oh yeah Psych this the psychic higgins show that's what we have to be called <laughs> it's got a catchy name i think we should let's let's get this started <laughs> <laughs> well looking back on the the three seasons that we've got here if this is the end is there a specific moment or you know a, a scene something that you were involved in or you witnessed it was something that just stands out to you as a, a favorite i'm sure that's an impossible question to answer but are there any any just top moments wow there are so many i think in the first episode or it might have been in the second episode i think it's in the first one where when nate goes um uh, is introduced to uh, rebecca and he's so nervous that he runs back up the stairs again. I mean, I've ha have asked Nick about that and apparently it was a mistake. He actually thought he was coming back in. So that's why it looks so real. But what it looks like is that he's so terrified of her. He doesn't know where he is. And every time I must have watched just that moment <clears throat> a dozen times and it makes me laugh at the same level every time. That's my, that's my standout, <clears throat> excuse me, comedy moment. I love it. That's love it. this show. It's just so special. And I, I feel like across the board, every time I rewatch it, there, there's either something new or just something that, that still hits the exact same. But Jeremy, thank you so much for, for chatting. It was a pleasure. And, you know, thank you for this show because it's been a, a fantastic ride over the last three years. And I appreciate you for being gracious to, to chat with us and to share this show with the world. So thank you. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. It was great talking to you. Thank you.